exciting to be here again. Yes, yes. Here we are. Next season number nine. nine. I know you're still getting used to it. Yeah, no, I'm trying to, <laughs> like, it's kind of like the new year, right? Like the new year, you're like, you'll, you'll, you'll start writing your papers and it still says 2021. Yeah. I remember the other day I was going through putting calibration stickers on everything. It's like, because I, I calibrate things in life, y'all. Medical That's his equipment. job. Right. No, I mean, I wrote 2022 on everything for that month and I had to go back through. You mean 2021? No, I wrote 2022 which means it's due date. So I'd have to oh, write 2023 as oh, the due date. And then I went through all of those things it. and said, that, no, it's good because they put it in grass that easy. Right. But anyways, no, today we're going to be talking, uh, man, to a guest who is awesome. Um, it's going to be a, an identity kind of a series. But you know what? We're also talking about obedience. Yeah. So like, how are we obedient in this identity? Yeah. Um, because that's the whole season. Obey. Hey, come on. It's so cool. Um, we're thinking, I was thinking about dictionaries, or we were thinking about dictionaries, actually, when we were bouncing this around, and I really want to give the definition of a dictionary. Go for Cause it. Because I think it's really cool. A reference book listing alphabetically terms or names important to a particular subject or activity along with discussion of their meanings and applications. Mm -hmm. Take the dictionary away and put Bible, <laughs> and you really got something That's there. That's true. It's like, it's like wait, not, okay, it's not alphabetical order, y'all. I get it, okay? <laughs> it's chrono chron chronological, okay, I get this. But important things, particular subjects, right? Activities um, and discussions. It's really cool when the Bible unpacks this, especially when it comes to identity, trauma, and crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the idea that he made us all you know, he's the potter. He's the creator. Mm. Creators name their creations. Now, I know there's people like, well, sometimes, no, like, let's just go bare bones basic and not exception to the rule. The rule exists because God created us and everything else. And so he has the intended purpose, point, identity for all those things. And so how does that impact obedience? We thought we would bring someone in where that was the exact thing that led them down the path to victory and obedience. And so today we are welcoming Reverend Mark Sowersby. He's served for over 25 years, and he's currently the pastor of Calvary Community Church in Dudley, Massachusetts. And he's also the author of Forgiving the Nightmare, which you'll hear more about all throughout the episode. So let's go ahead and welcome Pastor Mark onto the episode. Hey Reverend guys, thanks for having me. Reverend or pastor, what do we call <laughs> you? Call me Mark. You know, it's multiple names. Awesome. Man. awesome. Man. awesome. That, that First gift my mother ever gave me was my name so <laughs> there you go well, welcome to welcome to the pantry man I'm, I'm excited to get into this to to talk to you because you know it is about our spiritual nutrition that we that we keep in our pantries our hearts and i think that with your with your story your testament y'all go out there read the book i'm telling you it, it is going to open your eyes to how forgiveness and how god works in someone's life and brings them forward so just say yeah, tell us yeah. tell us a little bit about yeah. yourself well thank again thank you so much for having me on i'm really honored uh, you know, it's a blessing to be here and be able to share my testimony and my story. You know, unfortunately, it, it comes with a lot of brokenness, like many stories do. From the ages of seven to uh, 14 years old, I was abused. I was abused in every way, shape, and form that one could be abused. My body was uh, abused by uh, men to, to have sexual relations with. I was beat, stabbed. I was sold. I was just just lost. I was lost in a bunch of abuse. But really, that's not the whole story. That's just a piece of my story. I was my, I was born from an affair. My mother had an affair with my father. He was married to another. So I didn't get to meet him uh, growing up. So my mom, who was hurt, lost in her own way, kind of latched on to somebody who came into our life. And that somebody was the one who would abuse me. And those years of abuse took, took a toll. Like many of us, we all have a hurt and a pain. And those years take a toll on all of us to shape us and in health, unhealthy ways. And it, like somebody who went through abuse, I was unhealthy. I was just trying to figure out how to get out. I was angry, but most of all, I was numb. I was lost. I didn't know who I was. I had no identity. And the identity that I had was broken. It was it was uh, empty. That's, that's the biggest word I could say about those years of abuse. I just wanted to be set free, but I felt trapped because again, from seven to 14, sometimes three, four times a day, I was, I was abused. I was raped. I was hurt. So ugly times, ugly, ugly days in my life, kind of at age of 16, uh, somebody invited me to a church. Uh, I went to a youth group again, like I told you guys before the show, it was the eighties. We all had mullets. It was okay. All right. <laughs> I rock Z's. We were cool. And we went to a church and, you know, they started telling me about Jesus and I didn't understand it. I didn't grow up in a religious home or a Christian home, uh, 
you know, we knew God was good, but that's about it, you know. Uh, and, and somebody asked me to make Christ my savior. And that kind of started the journey of my life. You know, this broken kid from abuse and sorrow and rejection and lost and hurt uh, made Christ my savior that day. And it was the, the journey that changed my life. And I would just add that uh, I wrote this book called Forgiving the Nightmare because I know we all have a nightmare. You've heard mine it was child abuse, but all of us have struggled through some kind of nightmare. All of us have had something that we've had to lay at the feet of Jesus, lay on the altar, uh, learn how to walk through forgiveness. We all have an abuse, a rejection, a fear, something that's happened to us that's uh, made us face that that issue about forgiveness and identity and obedience. You know, the Lord says forgive, right? That's obedience. And then you have your body abused. And boy, let me tell you, that's a tough journey, one that's not over in a second. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm thinking of this transition. So you were in school, right? during the younger yeah, years as yeah. well. And then, and then you, you're still in school after the transition. Yeah. So what was the impact of, on, on your school before the, the transformation versus after? Well, let me just mention a couple of things here. Now you gotta remember, we're going back to the mid seventies, early eighties. Right. So about from 77 to about 84. So you, we're going way back, right? Now those years, the advocacy, the support, the awareness for child abuse, I'm sure it was there. It just wasn't as prevalent as it is today. There's people always looking to assist and help. Those days it wasn't. Those kind of things happened behind closed doors. Families didn't talk about it. So again, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is yeah, it took a toll. Not only, not only was I uh, uh, abused, but I was also I grew up with a learning defect. I grew up without being able to read. I was dyslexic. I was in special ed. You know, the small buses? That was me. I was a small bus kid. You know, special ed. I didn't go from classroom to classroom in high school or or junior high. I stayed in one classroom. I was on a, I believe they call it a EIP. EIP? An IEP. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for helping me out. So yeah, I was at one of those programs. So thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know what I always find amazing is identity is such a big part of all of our lives, even if we don't have the Lord, because it's ingrained in us and the things around us. It's like we're always searching in some way for meaning. And when we don't have Christ and we don't have that key of who we actually are and who we're supposed to be, what is happening to us shapes that completely. And when you were asked to go to a youth group at 16 one praise god for the kid that was bold well was a, it was a leaf guard Lord. and she was pretty oh, <laughs> wow well look praise hey. see look god uses <laughs> beauty god uses hey, beauty y'all then, <laughs> then she picked me up with her boyfriend so hey you know hey but that's okay <laughs> right had to set had to set the boundary like hey by the way i invited you for the lord <laughs> you know, the church i said okay i'll go anywhere and then uh, <laughs> and her boyfriend picked me up that night. So that's a long story. But so so as you're starting to do all of these things, what what did you experience? Um, and our daughter's just running through Rogue right now. It's all good. Um, <laughs> that's podcasting. But um, what was the first, I guess, thing you learned about the Lord that really impacted you? Well, that he was real and made it. Yeah, click. yeah, that's great. You know, I think as I look back now, uh, Monday morning quarterbacking, you know, now I have a theology yeah. degree. I can use all these big Greek words. But I think I think <laughs> back then it was just that God's real, that he's real. That was, you know, I, I didn't understand about all the nuances of the New Testament and Old Testament. I didn't understand about the politics of church or any of that stuff. But right. I, I started to find out that God is real and he really could right. love somebody like me now. Again, I think because of my years of abuse, I, I was left so broken, so empty, so just, I felt like dirt. I felt like leftover. Again, no identity. I tried to become whatever I could become just for acceptance. So if it was to be loud, I was loud. If it was to be the clown, I was the clown. Just accept me. Right. So I walk into this church and you know, there's people who's telling me that God loves me. And I think the first thing I realized is that God was real because I didn't understand love. I didn't understand acceptance. I didn't understand any of those kind of concepts. I just said, wow, there is a God who loves me, you know? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And then as far as, so God being real, first thing you realized about God. Now, what was the first thing that you learned 
about yourself from God's perspective? What what was the first thing that clicked in you once you're like, okay, God's real, so what he's saying is real. And then what, what did he say about yeah, you yeah, yeah. that really were you were like, whoa, this is a game changer. Well, that really came, you know, I like to think that it came later on. It didn't come immediately. Right. Immediately what yeah. I found was acceptance. You know, growing yeah. up in a broken home, I found acceptance. I found a place to that was safe. And then years later, I started to ve- believe that I had value, that I wasn't just right. junk. I'm not that I'm far from perfect and I still got my, my roads right. to walk. But I realized that God could do something with me, that I, I could be yeah. more than just the sum of brokenness, mm-hmm. that I could be more. And that's really where the story begins, right? Because you're like, okay, yeah. like, you know, you are, I'm clay now and you're the potter. And now you got to cut right. from me. You got to mold me. You got to shape me. So, yeah, I think that's the first thing that I started to realize that God was, that could use me, that I could have value, that I could, you know, I didn't know what it was and I didn't know what it looked like and I didn't understand it all. But I started to get this revelation, if you would, that I wasn't junk. Yeah. I, I, I like that idea, too, that healthy acceptance. Mm-hmm. Like like you're saying acceptance, but it was healthy yeah. acceptance. Yeah. yeah. It was something that you you probably hadn't witnessed before. Yeah. You know, everything was a broken acceptance, a worldly acceptance, a desirable acceptance. Not for you, but yeah. for others. Yeah. A, a used acceptance. Um, but then you come into this, this arena of healthy yeah. acceptance. And I think that's important for people who are going through things, mm-hmm. anything that they're going through. We have to get ourselves into this, this healthy environment. Mm-hmm. And, and that's part of obedience as well. When we're thinking about this, it's like, okay, there was things I had to get rid of. You know, when I finally came to the Lord, I was like, okay, you know, I'm done. There was <laughs> things I was like, well, I got to be done with that. And, and I think that was a, a big hindrance in my own life was trying to, weigh those things like well if i if i if i go to god now well i have to give up mm-hmm. this and but i think that that healthy acceptance do you, what, well, what do you think you know i like how you said healthy and not acceptance. perfect right because there's no right, such right. thing as perfect i mean the people i went to church with yeah. the people i go to church with the people i fellowship none of them are perfect i mean let's just be honest right. but we try to love our neighbors we try to be kind we try to be mm-hmm. gentle we try to be real and i think that's exactly what i found a place that didn't demand from me something that uh, was unhealthy. I found a place that I could just find safety at and acceptance. In particular about that night is I remember that we had youth group Wednesdays for Bible study and Fridays for youth groups, kind of how the pattern was in those days. And I went on a Friday night and I didn't really know the youth pastors. I was just a guest, but we lived in the same apartment complex I came to know years later, well, sometime later. Wow. Wow. And the next morning, it was Saturday. I was on the third floor of an apartment complex is where we lived. And I remember it felt like 10, 12 cars showed up in front of our apartment and were blowing the horn. And all these kids came out of the car and they were calling me down. Hey, Mark, come hiking with us. We're going to go hike a mountain. If you're from New England, we hike a mountain called Mount Monadnock. It's kind of like everybody does it. And they were all waiting for me. And, you know, come on down. I just remember that moment because I didn't know these guys and they wanted me. It was the first time I felt wanted, you know, I, I knew I had my extended family who loved me, but people went out of their way for me and they were beeping their horns. And we're on the, I looked down from the patio and there's a bunch of cars, you know, come on, Mark. I had no money. I, that's all right. We'll buy you lunch. I had the wrong shoes on to go hike and that's okay. And it was just the first time <laughs> that I felt accepted and like people went out of their way for me. You know, you were saying like the healthy acceptance, and I love that the the word healthy is so important. We can only trust God with that perfect healthiness because the world is full of counterfeit acceptance and you have to become something and it doesn't matter what, or the other side, you're unapologetically whoever Mm. you are and you kind of freeze yourself into being the the creation and the creator all at once. But the other thing I noticed is also healthy use. You were of healthy use. You were excited Mm. that God could use you, and yet you come from a background where you were used in all the wrong ways. And it's amazing because, like, that's one of the things that just coming to the Lord and just sitting with him and his people, right? You don't, I mean, as a kid, you don't know how to do all, how to, how to quote unquote do Christian life. You know, you're just there. You know, you're just pursuing, and yet you're, you're, leaning in it's not like you were like oh this is 
more you like I'm good. I'm being used again by this yeah, God exactly. because you feel the love right. and the trust to, that you're like, I'm being used in a way that that makes sense, like in the way that I meant to, yeah. you know. Um, and so, you know, this whole this whole season, it's called obey, obey him before anyone else. And the idea of, you know, our walk like obedience, a lot of people see it as like, you know, the negative mm -hmm. like. Um, that's works. That's legalism. Except like when you when you start to fall in love with him and you realize and trust him, it's like, well, dumb gonna obey. You know, it, it like a, there's a different relationship. But can you kind of walk us through sure. like how that started playing a role? Well, in let your me life? just back up a second. So, so you know, I get yeah. saved. That, that youth, that very couple of days later, that that group calls me down. So now I become a fixture, right? Because there's acceptance, there's mm -hmm. safety. I start right. going to every service. I mean, I'm I'm at the I'm at the senior service. I'm at the I'm at the woman's service. They're kicking me out. As soon as that door was open, <laughs> I was there because it was a safe place. But I still lived right. my life as a victim because that's all I knew. Right. So the right. psyches, the psyche that I had, the protection that I built, the worldview that I carried was still around me. I had to protect myself. You know, I, I had to still, and and that slowly by the work, God's word and having a safe connection and having safe places started to melt away. So yeah, the obedience started to come where it started to say, will you trust me back? You know, I, I you know, God started asking me, and it was small things. It wasn't like, oh, overnight just surrender it all it was inch by right. inch step by step mm. it was little victories it became bigger victories it's like hey can you trust me here mark oh, i don't know god you know i've not trusted anybody every time i trust somebody they hurt me they betray me they lie to me right. they abuse me well just trust me with an inch just trust me with a pebble mm. and then you know before you know it you're you're you know you're trusting god with it all and it's you know so sometimes people look at us look at me and go wow how can you trust god so much i go I don't think I do. You know, I think there's so much more. <laughs> um, but that really came manifested for me in my education. Uh, academia was something I was always very frightened of. And it was something being a special ed student, being dyslexic uh, was something I always wrestled with. Uh, it just that uh, academia was like this giant in my life. And, and I remember God calling me to go to school. And I, I, you know, I want you to be a pastor. Well, I got to go to school and I wrestled with it. There's a whole big story in that, how I tried out different schools and they rejected me. But I'll tell you when I finally found the place God called me to go, I said, yes, but then the real work began. I trusted God to help me get right. into school, but it still didn't make it easy. I still had to find right. study buddies and, and use the, the right. library a lot. And, you know, I got a lot of D's, a few A's, you know, but we made it through. Uh, we made it through. So the obedience was just the first step, but the journey still has its lefts and rights and up and down. Mm. I like that because it makes me think of uh, John six thirty seven, mm -hmm. about you know he never is going to cast That's us right. out, and and like like you you hear those words like Jesus sits there and says you know I like my father and I will never cast you out and it's like wait, I'm not used to that. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. I'm used to like getting beat down, rejected, like thrown kicked to the, out. kicked out, whatever, uh, broken. But, uh, that is, that is like so amazing how God is working in your story to, to look, look y'all, this is the guy who rode the small bus to school mm -hmm. yet. He sits in front of us, you know, as a pastor, a reverend, mm -hmm. you know, and, and through, a through school, yeah. you know, God, stayed there he didn't cast yeah. him out he brought you in and and really took care of you and that's an amazing story now i do have a question sure. because there's one thing that we haven't really talked about and that i i don't know how if you're even comfortable Please. talking about it but there had to be a place where there was a break from the abuse from the abusers um because i mean matthew 18 20 through 21 through 22 you know forgive 70 times seven and it's like okay how did that work itself right. out because i think that's important to understand because we we're not, we're not hearing that part part mm -hmm. and i think that we need to understand how god worked in yeah that. you know i think a couple ways first the physical way right when i was about mm -hmm. when i was about 14 i confessed to my uncle everything that was happening with my mother's youngest brother and i'll never forget he was a blue collar guy you know nine to five working paying the bills and he came home from work and then his nephew walks in the house and goes hey hey uncle i'm being abused and i think his eyes bugged out of his head and he picked me up i'll never forget he picked me up he's like are you are you fooling around buddy you making up stories and i, I said no and he became my defender you know he became somebody that believed in me 
So I had somebody on my side, him and my aunt really were the ones. I had others probably now that I look back, but I didn't recognize it then. Uh, so, right. you know, he became the voice. Unfortunately, we lost my uncle when I was in high school and we lost him to cancer, but he was my defender. So I had that physical view of a healthy pattern of somebody in our life. As far as the spiritual one, it was like, okay, I'm in a safe place. I'm trusting God and God's telling me to trust him with, you know, Chuck, can you tithe? God, give, we don't, people in my family ain't give 10% to the church. Are you crazy? You know, trust me, Mark. 10%? God, how about I give a tip instead of a tithe? No. So, you know, I started to trust God with little things. And then one day he went for the big one. Can you forgive your mom? Whoa, whoa, God. You know, it wasn't like, it didn't happen the first day. It happened in a journey. It happened in the walk. And then God said, hey, we're going to touch the third rail. We're going to go for the bigger mountain. We're going deeper into the clay. We got to cut that hard spot out. You know, you guys got little kids and you know, you, when you brush the hair, they get the knot, oh. you know, the big tangle, and it's the yeah. fight, like, come yeah. on, I don't wanna. That's, you know, you're like, okay, God, you can just brush around it, but don't touch me. What's mom <laughs> say? We got to get the knot out. <laughs> you gotta get, I got three girls, I know. Right. And, you know, right. that's what it was, was that God brushed all around it, if you would, and it got to my knot. He's like, let's start dealing with that. Mm. And I can't tell you it was a hallelujah moment where I yeah. started to dance. I started to cry. I started to go to the altar. I right. shaked my fist a few times. How can you ask me, God? It was unfair. Why did this happen to me? I, I have the right to be angry. I don't have to forgive them. It's my right. And God mm. just slowly, right. by his love, just started to help me walk mm. in that forgiveness. It's amazing when, when you start to hear that, his love. Yeah. Why are we obedient? Right. Because how we he 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 brings his love into right. our lives and how he continuously shows us, you know, my my faith, your faith, her Amen. faith. It's not our faith. It's his. It's him pouring That's faith right. into That's us right. because we just tr we're trusting. And and I think it's important for people to understand who might be hurting right now mm -hmm. that you there there has to be a point where there the, the trust. If that's the only obedience you can muster up right now is to turn to God then that's the obedience turn to God and just make that your turn yeah. uh, that way that way they he can start to show you and pour into you because what I'm hearing right now is mm -hmm. just God constantly pouring yes. in constantly yes. pouring in it's like Mark is sitting here like and I'm like no and he's like oh yeah I love you no exactly. I love you and it's, yeah. it's, it's like awesome. I didn't know how to receive love you know? I, right I, right I had a mom that was hurting I, her husband was abusing my dad was not in my life I mean, I was provided for, there was food on the table. I had clothes on my back, but I didn't know. I mean, everybody was coming from their own rejection, their own dysfunction, and they were all putting it on me. And, and so here I am just trying to figure out who I am. So the God shows up in my life, says, I love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody tells me that, you know, you love me. What's it going to cost me? You're going to abuse my body. You're going to steal some of my, right, my right. identity. You're going to take away my dignity because that's what everybody else did. No, I just love you. And I want to make you better. And it took a long time. I mean, I can't tell you, you know, I think sometimes when we think about forgiveness, like I wrote in the book, forgive the nightmare. It's not instant all the time. Now what Christ did on the cross was instant, you know, we we're forgiven for our right, sin, right. but sometimes us that walk this journey, you know, David said, I walk through the valley. And sometimes we got to walk through some valleys, just knowing that God is with us. You know, David walked through the valley of death. I, you know, I know I walked through the valley of forgiveness, you know, and I had to walk through that valley saying, God, I don't know how to forgive. You know, will you forgive your mom? Yeah, will you forgive these people who rejected you? And then one day, will you forgive your abuser? Let me tell you, that was not a moment where I was like, hallelujah, I want to testify. You know, that was where I don't, you know, God, we're going to take a little break. God, I'm not ready to listen right now. But he was still ready to speak. And he was speaking to me and speaking to me. All the way up to he said to me, will you write a book? I remember saying, God, I, I read at a third grade level, God. I'm a special ed student. I'm dyslexic. I, you know, you want me to write a book? And I walked. It took me 30 years to put it to paper because I was so afraid. Mm. I was afraid. And then, right. you know, when I a couple of years ago, God's just like, it's time. It's time to write it down. It's time to share the story. It's time to let people know my mom was passing. Mm. And I think that uh, God was merciful to my mom because if I, she knew I was talking like this, she come from that generation that, you know, if you didn't talk about it, it didn't happen. Right. right but I'll right. tell you the, the, the winter of my mom's life, she accepted Jesus Christ to be her savior. Thief on the cross wow. moment. Praise she's God. still cussing at me. Yes. She's, still, she's, still cussing. <laughs> she's praying and cussing, but you know, God loves her. 
made yeah. that. She made that, and I believe when she closed her eyes here, because of God, not because of what she did. Right. And my mother never abused me, but she neglected right. me in the sense that she that ne- she didn't protect me. Right. right. You know that's that's giving up worldly or like you're going from worldly mastery mm-hmm. to heavenly yeah, mastery. And and it's a, that's a tough I mean, that's a that's it's a, a tough, tough transition. transition. And it's still in work. Yeah. It's still there. You know, it's still moving up. Right. Oh, brother, we're all in work. I think we're going until we're I die. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I say. I'm like, that's the walk. <laughs> that that is the walk. You know. And I I love this season so much because like the tagline is religion yeah. meet relationship. Right. Because when it comes to obedience, we think in one of two ways. And I think that I, we said this in the very first episode how obedience and fear can cause all that trauma all that bitterness all that struggle it can cause it in ourselves and we'll do it to other Mm -hmm. people because we're not using the fear of the lord which is a whole different word in the greek that shay knows and i don't um but it's it's the fear like we would fear an abuser Mm -hmm. and we're we're terrified of the punishment that would come if we don't do what it is and so then we get rebellious for other reasons what i hear you saying over and over and what i want everyone listening to realize is that this episode we're not dropping obedience this 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 but it's all about that why Mm. because it's about god faithfully building his relationship with you knowing how hurt you are knowing what life and people had done to you and coming with small pebbles at a time requests knowing that he is god and has all rights and authority to just Mm. come and tell you straight up you must do absolutely everything i say right now because i am god so quit your fuss and quit quit the crying and get up and do what i just said write this book right now or go forgive that person right now no he was like i love you this is about a relationship this isn't about me flaunting that i'm god almighty this is about me being Mm. with you and and having you exercise faith and i love that because that is the key to this so that it becomes a relationship with willing obedience not always That's joyful right. right or not always like happy and excited but i i just you know i think sometimes as a pastor i see people their default for the christian is forgiveness we know the scriptures right forgive those who trespass yeah. against you if you don't forgive them how can your heavenly father forgive you and those echo in the christian's mind and we want to out of a mm. out of passion out of love out of desire out of obedience mm. we want to just move into that but we don't allow ourselves to go through the journey and, and that has emotions, that has feelings. We cry, we weep, we get angry, we pray. So I think, you know, sometimes I see as a pastor, people get wounded. Something happens in their life and they go, I've forgiven. I forgive by the grace of God, I've forgiven. And it's a great place to confess. It's a great place to hope for. But they never give themselves the permission or the freedom in the arms of Jesus to weep, you know, reason, Find counselors, find psychiatrists, find coaches, find pastors, find people. And, you know, know, never give themselves permission to walk through that grief Mm. or walk through that trauma. So they confess the the forgiveness because it's true and it comes from a good place, but they never give themselves that journey. And God wants to be on that journey with us. That's why I call it forgiving the nightmare, because it was a journey. I mean, you can't take away seven years of horrible abuse. It's a part of my narrative. Like I tell people, it never went away. I still, I still can remember. It's a, I can still think about it. I can still hear it and smell it. I can still right. feel that pain. It never went away. But what happened was God became bigger than all that pain. Mm-hmm. And the mountain of God, the love of God overcast, his shadow falls upon that pain. So that pain raises its head up. Yeah, does the liar come back? Satan accuses. Does my insecurities want to pop up and all those? Sure, every day. But God reminds me he's bigger, that his word is stronger, that his love is greater. And I have to choose to live in that. Some days are better than others. (laughs) Always. You know, the world will say forgiveness leads you to freedom. But what I just heard, and I like this, is that that freedom through Christ, yep. right, leads to for forgiveness. Amen. Yeah, and that and that's amazing. It's like wow. It's like it's everything the world throws at us. Mm-hmm. It, it, God reverses it. And says, wait, that's backwards. Mm-hmm. Right. That's back. Come to me, all that's who right. are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. Yeah. See, they, we want to look for that rest. Like, how do I? How am I going to find this rest? How am I going to find this rest? What do I got to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six? No, God. 
Yeah, we're starting at the branches, we're, we're, not yeah, the we're root, start, over yeah, and ooh, over there again. There you go, start at the branches, not that's the that's root. Good. Like, and yeah. that's why, you know, when you've been through trauma, mine was child abuse, others, uh, an untimely death, a divorce. Right. Uh, there's so many right. things that when you're in that situation, you're building yourself a psyche, a psychology, a, a network of how to how to deal with it. And oftentimes when we're by ourselves, especially as children, it's not healthy. But let me tell you, it takes a crowbar to let it go because you've held on to it for so long. So God's replacing that day by day. God's saying, okay, you can let go of that, that, uh, that view. You can let go of that protection. You can let go of that mask and come to him. And, you know, it took me seven years to put it on. It's taken me well, almost 40 something years to take it off. Yeah. Right. You know, it makes me think of like we had a season called Rewired about how God rewires us when we come to him because we've wired our minds are so wired wrong because of everything that you just said. And then when you, when you were talking about the mountain being so big, um, the mountain of God being so big and shrinking other things, it makes me think of our perception yeah. of time and why the older and older I get, I'm like, whoa, where did the time go? What, how is it already 2022? Wait, it's Christmas again. Wait, it's 4th of July again. When did that happen? And it takes a lot for me to remember how mm. it must feel for my daughter who's about to be, or I guess by the time this airs, she'll be three. Wow. And um, and I, I read something a couple years ago about how we perceive time. And if you think about it in the terms of like a ratio, a percentage, a fraction, something like that, you think about, okay, to a, to a kid who's only experienced two years of life. I don't know how many minutes that is, right? <laughs> but it's not a lot of minutes compared to a 30 a 31 year old like me. Now you ask them to wait for five minutes. So five divided by however many number of minutes they've experienced, yeah. right? Waking minutes, I should add. Like, okay, that's gonna be a larger number than me who's told to wait five minutes sure. over however many minutes yeah. a 31 year old has had in their life. And so when we're looking at obedience, when we're looking at faith, when we're looking about any of this, like what, what, what you're both saying, mm. when we're like trying to solve the symptoms we can get very impatient because we're looking at it from the wrong mm -hmm. side. We're trying to find a 12 step program and we're expecting it to work really fast because we're, we're operating in our right. time and we're operating with whatever size God is versus our life at the moment. But the longer we stay in Christ, the bigger he gets and the smaller everything else gets, which tends to amaze the newer believers mm -hmm. or even believers who aren't that new, but haven't put in as much time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I could never get there. And I'm like, it's like everything else. But the key, again, is the relationship with God, not the works. The works happen. Yeah. The works just happen. Yeah, it's happen. the journey. And then before you know it, you look yes. around and you know, people are going, hey, you, you've done this. Not, you're like, I have? I'm just focusing on Jesus. I'm just the one. I'm, yes. you know, <laughs> the word of God says it's a lamp into our feet. You know, And I love that verse because you know, a lot of people want spotlights to their path. Tell me what's next. But when I think of a lamp, I think of a lantern, right? And you can only see one step at a time. You can't see all the way down yeah. the path. The guy's just like, I'll show you the next step. And I'll show you the next step. And then before you know it, sometimes he lets you turn around. And you're like, wow, look where I've been. And he's like, don't look back, you know, but you keep looking at me. And I, and I think that's great. You know, when God first told me to write the book, again, another big story. I was in Bible school. I got invited on a ministry team. I'm preaching up in Canada. I'm working an altar, as we say. I'm praying for people. And in the middle of that prayer, God said, you're going to write your testimony down. I said, oh, yeah, right, God. I can barely read. How can I do that? You know, I kind of laughed. And I said, God, if this is from you, what will I call it? He said, you're going to call it forgiving the nightmare. And that was buried in my heart. I got married. I had children. I had different churches. I, I had victories. I had needs, everything in between. And that stayed in our heart. My wife and I always wondered, how will it manifest itself? What will forgiving the nightmare look like? Is it just a the, uh, philosophy of how we live? Is it, is it a, what is it? And again, one day God said, now's the time. And I felt like that little kid again. God, I can't do this. God, I can't do this. Mm. But my wife is really, really smart. I told you, I, gra I barely graduated. She graduated like a bunch of A's and she wore like robes around her neck. I, she like, had a bad day and said yes to me. I don't know. Don't tell her. Right? She, she could have done a lot better. But hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just, this whole conversation is just edifying in ways that, that would encourage people to take that chance. Yes. 
you know, take that chance. I, I think that we, we, we put too much on ourselves. We do. We do. Um, and, and it's, it turn it over to God. Um, you know, I'm thinking about life. I'm thinking about how the word of God works this life. And, you know, if you were to go through first Peter, um, one and, you know, one through 10, it's talking about, you know, the living hope and 11 through 22 talks about living salvation, you know, and then you drop down to verses 23 through, uh, chapters two or three, and he writes about a living word, you know, everything about that is living, 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 and living, you know, even Charles Dickens said the best book he ever read, you know, it was the best book he ever read. You know, you could go through a whole bunch yeah. of people. I mean, Andrew Jackson said the same thing. You know, he said it was the rock on which our republic stands. Right. You know, Abraham Lincoln said it was the best gift God ever gave mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and here we are talking about this this book, this truth. But it's no, it's so much more than just a dictionary or, or words on a paper or a description. Okay. It's like living and active, like like every part of your life. Mark, do, tell 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 our viewers viewers if if yeah. you don't mind. As you open the word of God and read through the word of God and you're, you know, you'll read a verse 10 times, right? Maybe a hundred times in our lifetime. Who knows? How does that transpire in the seasons that you're going? Well, through? sure. You know, the, the Bible's alive, right? The, John 1, 1, the word became flesh. So the Bible's alive. What's yeah. great about it, it speaks to us wherever we're at. So again, the, the mm -hmm. 16, 17, 18 year old Mark who read the word, who just needed a friend, needed hope. The Bible gave it to me. Uh, the, the young pastor who didn't know how to even, you know, do a wedding or a funeral or run a choir or have a board. Boy, the Bible gave it to me. When my wife came home and said, hey, I'm going to have a baby. This guy that was broken, ready to become a dad. The Bible gave me words and inspired me. Sometimes it was the same verse. Sometimes it was the, you know, the ones that were so familiar, but it spoke to me. Now, here I am, you know, 50 plus years old, just wrote a book. I, I got a little bit more experience. I, and God's still speaking to me. That living word still speaks to us. It could be, you know, uh, it applies to us where we're at and we hear it. It's life. You know, I think some of our circles would call it, it's rhema, it's lo logos. You know, it's the words of God. Yeah. It's that revelation of God that speaks to us where we're at. You know, you can read that story. You know, I was telling the church the other day, I like to read first and second Timothy. And we know that's Timothy, uh, Paul writing to Timothy is, his son in the faith, if you would. Well, the, for the first time, I I wasn't reading it as Timothy. I was reading it as Paul going, am I going to leave something? Am I going to leave wow. people better? Wow. Usually my whole life I've read it as Timothy going, teach me, teach right. me, show me, show me. And now I opened it up. I was like, hey, I'm reading this as the old guy, not the young guy. Am I going to leave <laughs> wow. something? Am I, That's you know, amazing. That was a real yeah. revelation for me right there. Right. Right. I like that. What I love is that if we had had this recording a few months ago, I would have been like, yeah, cool. But what's amazing is now I'm like, whoa, yeah. Cause like we're going through Bible college right now and we're going through the, the, like the leadership epistles. So we just got through first Timothy. We've been alluding to second Timothy. We're going through all of those. And so it hits in a different way. And, and that's another yeah. way that yeah. it works, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. She, ju she jumped on, on this year uh, at the, this semester and I'm like, man, is this going to be a distraction, Lord? <laughs> Cause my I'm wife. too busy writing notes. <laughs> but but to I, I, talk keep to you. I keep myself I keep myself distance from her. I'm like, you no. Know, you're not giving each other notes, you know? Not, oh. <laughs> I don't. I'll take my notes seriously. We're, we're a small church. <laughs> like, we're a small church. We do have a dot edu, and I'm too busy running sound and video. Oh, and see, I, I thought notes. you'd be like, I, ain't got I thought time. you'd have in the little. If you like me. Hit X. If you don't like me, hit X. No, what's yeah. funny is we sit so far apart. Not so far apart. We're both in the dead back, but I'm at the like the, the screen to project things, and he's at the screen to stream so, things. So we can whisper to each other, well, but, you know. Come on. What I'm God is putting in a student. Oh, man, put this hey, come exactly. on, fellas. So, come on. <laughs> so since this is the season of Obey, our last – so nice last question here I yeah. think would be awesome. Um, define – like if you're sitting there talking to your church, mm -hmm. how would you define obedience? Love. Love. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only thing that's going to motivate you to obedience. It's the only thing. Because if it's just a bunch of do's and not, don'ts, it's religion. And nobody is good enough. You know, for a season, you can be disciplined for a, a time, for a situation. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to motivate you, especially when it gets hard. You know, especially when it gets so it has to be from love, it has to be genuine. Right. Well, I, I don't serve God because I'm afraid to go to hell. 
I serve God because he loves me so much. And that love, no, no, don't get me wrong. I'm afraid to go to hell, but those, you know, <laughs> but that, if that was the fear that kept me, it would be empty. I'd be bitter. I'd, I'd have a, I'd have an empty religion. Look what I've done, you know, to, in my, in, but I serve God. Obedience starts with love because I love my wife. I want to serve her because I love my children. I want to serve them. I mean, it's just the motivation. And again, doesn't mean it's not going to be hard or difficult. There's going to be trials and, and troubles, but, but the love is what keeps you going. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was the love that God had for you and I that sent the son. It was the love the son had for the father that he was obedient to go to the cross. So it's the, it's the love that motivates. And so it has to start there. It starts for me. It started as a pebble, right? I didn't understand about love. I, I understood about a safe place. Then it grew. Yeah. You know, trust me. Step out. Oh, I'm junk God. Nobody wants me. I'm, I'm a leftover. I'm dirt. It's okay. Trust me for the next thing. Go to Bible college. God, I'm going to fail. I'm going <laughs> to, I don't even know what a syllabi was. You know, I, I you know, go ahead, you know. <laughs> go but god i'm gonna just go i remember telling my professor one day i'm gonna be 40 years old still in this college and he said you're gonna be 40 years old someday don't you want to be where god's called you to be you know and wow. so i think love is i know it's simple right. but it's deep because that's the only thing that that's going to keep us for when the hard time comes when we got to be a witness awesome. you know awesome. yeah that's awesome so you guys heard it love yes. Obedience is love. Thank you. Thank you Pastor so much Mark, for coming on. Really quick, let people know what your website is and if there's any handles that they can reach you at. And we're going to link it all in the show notes. So you don't have to worry if you if you don't catch well, it. Well, the best place to find me is at forgivingthenightmare.com, forgivingthenightmare.com. We're also on Facebook at Forgiving the Nightmare on Facebook. But hey, you ready? I just launched. My kids are proud. Of, I'm on Twitter now. Oh, yeah, ready? And Instagram. Well, I told oh, my daughter, I said, I'm on the instant. She started to laugh. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I would. I'm like, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, you're I'm so like, you're down to cool. <laughs> you know? I, I, I waited to have that kid until I was our age, <laughs> mine and your age. And so she'll just know that dad's on like those platforms. She'll be like, <laughs> she'll be like, dad. You got to get an NFT. And he'll be like, <laughs> what? Be what's, what? That? what's a NFT? Yeah, they told me, they said, no, Dad, you, you don't, you still speak in terms from the 90s. I'm like, well, up, G. I'm like, what's going on? Like, uh, stop, stop. Stop. So, no, you got to say, I'm on the gram. I'm on the gram. Yeah, there you go. You're I'm on the, on the gram, gram. There you go. right? There you, go. You, can, you can catch me on the catch gram, me. which probably is already outdated to like our youngest there you go. listeners. Shout out to I Josiah, who, who will tell me. <laughs> but um, no, but thank you so much. .com and you can see my books behind me if you'd like to get right. one. You know, again, my my goal for the book is just that the Lord may be glorified. And if you've been through a hurt in your life, you've got a nightmare you've walked through, let God walk you in that journey. It's okay to, to just let God lead you in it. So thank you guys for letting me share and share my heart and my testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you so this much. has been awesome. So for everybody listening, I hope this episode has encouraged you. Remember, we would love to hear from you and you can reach out to us at thepantrypodcast.com as well as get all the show notes and links right there. So until next time, bye. bye. bye.